I don't like what I see happening to America. The infrastructure of our country is a laughing stock all over the world. Our airports, our bridges, our roadways, it's falling apart. It's a terrible thing to see. Our politicians are all talk, no action. Millions of people are flowing across our southern border. We've got to build a real wall. With all of this, our country has tremendous potential. Let's make America great again. I've said it. Since the day he made the sacrifice to hit the campaign trail, voters crave the anti-status quo politician. They want results. They need a fighter. They need someone to fire all those political correct police. And this is a movement, the Trumpeters, Trump conservatives, these are what these folks are called. Everything about Donald Trump's campaign, it's avant-garde, and he is crushing it in the polls. One American News, you viewers, he's talking to you. He wants to connect to those who are going to show up at the polls and elect the leader of the free world. So, Mr. Trump, I had James Carville on yesterday. Remember his, it's the economy, silly. Uh, the turbulent global economy leads to daily volatility here, and that affects the working class. And I know that's where your heart is in this working class. How is our economy really doing, especially reacting to world markets? Well, if you really look, Sarah, at the economy, it's been terrible. We have 93 million people out of work. They look for jobs, they give up, and all of a sudden, statistically, they're considered employed. Our economy is doing terribly. We've lost tremendous amounts of jobs to China, to Japan, to Mexico, and to so many other places. And it's really very sad when you look at what's happening. We have taken away, they've just destroyed our job base, and we have to make a lot of improvement. Yeah, and I don't think we're getting the truth out of the White House, the uh, true state of the economy, so thanks for setting that straight. And uh, Bloomberg reports... No, the White House is not truthful. Yeah, and Bloomberg reports that, uh, well, you wouldn't mind raising taxes on yourself, and we know our current tax code, it's, it's a joke, and it's unjust. And I, though, wouldn't be offering to let the IRS take more of my money, but share what you mean by fixing our screwed-up tax code. Well, we have a complex tax code that nobody understands, and people can't figure it out, and they have to spend tremendous amounts of money for lawyers and accountants, and we have to simplify our tax code. You have hedge fund guys that are paying virtually no tax, and they're making a fortune, and we have to change our tax code. There's no question about it. And I say simplification. Now, you can go to a fair tax or a flat tax, but the easiest way and the quickest way, at least on a temporary basis, is simplification of the code, get rid of deductions, reduce taxes. But some of these people, like some of these hedge fund guys, they're making a lot of money. They're paying very little tax. It's unfair to the middle class. We have to create a new... I mean, we have to help the middle class. The country, as you know better than anybody, the country was based on the middle class. They're the ones that really had so much to do with what we all have now, and they are being treated horribly. Uh, you know, I want to talk about the campaign then, about that middle class that you're really resonating with, your message about fairness, just uh, jobs being created uh, in, a, in a better economy. On the campaign trail, specifically, I know a lot of military folks, and I saw a guy walk behind you, Mr. Trump, with a, uh, an Army T-shirt on, and it reminded me. Hearing from so many military personnel every day, personally, it's lately been all about you. It's uh, a connection there that I'd like to know more about. The respect that they have for a truth talker, as opposed to just getting punched in the nose the last seven years under Obama. How is it that you made that connection? Well, you're one of the people that would know because you have that connection also, Sarah. One of the reasons I've always liked you so much, you and your family, you have that great connection. And it's really pretty simple. You know, uh, you look at what's happening with the vets. They're being treated like third-class citizen. we, citizens. We have tremendous amounts of money going toward the vets, but we have incompetent management, incompetent leadership. And, you know, as of two weeks ago, they had the long... Two weeks ago on Wednesday, they had the longest wait in the history of the Veterans Administration, Sarah. People would wait five days, two days, three days to see a doctor in a waiting room. And sometimes at the end of that long wait, they wouldn't even get to see a doctor. The vets have been treated terribly. If I win, if I get the nomination and ultimately win, believe me, the vets will be taken care of. And I do have a relationship with them. I see the relationship. I feel it. 
They did a poll recently, and I'm very popular with the vets because they know I'll fix the Veterans Administration. It's a disgrace the way the vets are being treated in our country. They're are great people and they're treated very badly. And they are great people and they're humble. And uh, you know, the reason that it's been this undercurrent problem and scandal in the VA is because vets don't complain. They're not whiners. And here it is up to us then to figure out what the problem is and then to fix it. Um, more about the campaign trail. You're seeing some idiots in the press and they're misrepresenting your exchange like the other day with the political activist, the father of the Clinton staffer, Univision's Jorge Ramos, and you schooled that radical activist. And it was the right thing to do because I don't think he's going to pull that again. Where'd you get your guts for that kind of necessary confrontation? Well, you know, the press was very good to me on that one because he was totally out of line. He was screaming and ranting and raving. And I actually said, who is this guy? And then I figured it out. And, you know, I'm suing Univision, actually, for $500 million. His daughter works for Hillary Clinton, and he was trying to put on a show. But actually, he was hurting the rest because the room was packed with various people from the press. I mean, it was a press conference. And they were all being, you know, they were waiting to have questions. And I was going to ask them. I would have gotten to him. But he stood up and started screaming all over the place. And frankly, Sarah, the press was pretty good to me on that. I mean, they agreed with what I did. I never raised my voice or anything, but they agreed, generally speaking, with what I did. So I was happy with that. Oh, you're pretty gracious when it comes to then uh, treating the press uh, the way that sometimes they're not going to treat us conservatives, speaking of the press. So you get hit with these gotchas, like most conservatives do. For instance, they asking, What's your favorite Bible verse? And I'm listening to that going, what? Do they ask Hillary that? Uh, what does it have to do with um, running for the office of the presidency? Uh, it, is it anybody's business? Uh, these personal gotcha questions really trying to get you, us, any anybody running for office off game. Uh, how are you finding that and, and uh, finding a technique to put them in their place so that the American public isn't wasting their time and they actually get to hear what's important via a candidate's message? Well, you saw that. You know, I love the Bible and I'm a Protestant, I'm Presbyterian. And they were hitting me with different questions, one after another. And, I, you know, look, I don't know if it's uh, got you, but probably is. And then they said, what's your favorite verse? And, you know, that's a very personal thing. I don't like giving that out to two people that you hardly know. And frankly, uh, I don't know if they are fair questions or not fair questions. But, you know, there are certain things that you and myself and a lot of other people like to keep personal. But I love the Bible. It's, uh, I was, it actually started where somebody held up the book, The Art of the Deal. I said, that's my second favorite book. <laughs> but my first favorite book by far is the Bible. So, uh, but it's all worked out very well. You know, interestingly, in the last poll, I won with everything, including evangelicals, big with the evangelicals, big with the Tea Party. We had tremendous poll numbers with Tea Party and conservatives. But we also won with the moderates, with the poor, with the rich. I mean, we won on every category. So I was happy. But I was very happy with evangelicals and actually also very happy that the Tea Party numbers were much higher than anybody else's. Very happy about that. Well, you know, Tea Party uh, ad advocates, we, we uh, have a libertarian leaning streak within us. And I know that that's important to you, too, because uh, you understand that you as a businessman, as, as a father, as um, a, a family member, you can certainly make decisions for yourself, your business, your family better than some bureaucrat can uh, back in Washington, D.C. And that, that's kind of the foundation of a libertarian's thinking. Uh, I know you're busy. You got millions of people waiting for you, Donald Trump. So I have one more question. Here at One Go America ahead. News, the war room here at this network, they're looking at a poll and you're leading at, oh, about 41 percent. And you never dog it. So what is next? Because we know that you're going to keep rolling down the trail. Well, I am. And I'm having a lot of fun. I'm going to Massachusetts tonight. I'm going to Iowa again very soon. We had some tremendous evenings in Iowa and New Hampshire. I'm going next week again. And it's been amazing. In Alabama, you saw we had 31,000 people in the stadium last week. And the, the spirit there was incredible because they want to see something happen that's going to be great. They want to see America be great again. You know, if you look at what's happening with this country, 
it's so sad. And you pointed it out for years, and it wasn't easy for you to do that. And you hate to have to do that. But we are doing it, and we have tremendous support, tremendous standing ovations, and we're having a lot of fun. You know, we're bringing back the sort of, I, I use the term again, it hasn't been used in a long term, the silent majority. There's a tremendous group of people out there that just want to see this country be great again. And that's what I'm really seeing, and it really is resonating, Sarah. And I have to tell you, you are a terrific person, and it's great to be with you. Thank you so much, Donald Trump. Get out there and uh, let the people know what it is that you stand for and what your intentions are for this country. So thank you for taking your valuable time and sharing it with us. Thank you.